So I'm going to, we're going to remove these so we can lift the battery cable that goes up, up and over the engine. Then we're going to remove the fan shroud. Okay, now that the fan shroud is out, you will see that the, the power steering pumps down here, we're going to need to get this fan off. And it looks like there's four bolts right here. Shouldn't be too hard. Once that fan comes off, it won't be won't be much left. Oh, it looks like there's a lower the lower fan shroud. I didn't have two bolts in. There's two corners. So there's supposed to be four down there, so. Be aware of your trucks, uh, you know, I guess better taken care of than mine, there will be all four bolts. Oh, the radiator will still be hot if you just shut off your truck. Um, honestly, I wouldn't do this with the radiator right here until your truck's somewhat cool. But 13, four 13 millimeter bolts, and you gotta pry it off. They're not on too tight, so make sure not to um, you don't have to whip too hard and potentially cut yourself on the fan or damage the fan. Okay, now that that's off, uh, didn't come off with too much trouble. Um, now we're going to have to loosen the belt um, so we can get to the bolts. And we'll use the bolts between the holes to get to the three bolts that are there, okay? Um, so take the belt off. If you don't have an image on your, uh, your, uh, you know, up here anywhere, like I don't, I'm gonna have to draw a little picture real quick, uh, just so I know where, how the, the pattern goes. Um, after that, uh, I'll start taking the pulley off. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull off the whole assembly off, and I'll do the pulley separately on the new one. Um, make sure here, if you've got like a, a wire wheel or a wire brush, clean this up as best as you can, especially the, the threads for me particularly. This one right here is very difficult to remove. The rest of them um, weren't quite as bad, but um, I'm definitely gonna wire wheel, uh, wire brush a few of these just to make them a little bit nicer when I reinstall. Okay. Next up, take a three inch breaker bar or ratchet Put it towards the, the, if you're gonna do it, push it to the left, so untight, uh, counterclockwise. Um, this one is gonna loosen your belt, uh, so you can pull that off. Now, now during this, uh, check your belt. It looks bad. Uh, there's rips, cracks, chunks missing. Replace it. Someone looks like replaced mine fairly recently, um, and I would I'm gonna reuse this one. But uh, definitely now it's the time to replace it if you haven't already. Okay. So now we're gonna get to these bolts down here. Um, there's going to be three, one, two. It's gonna look like this. Let's see how that sits in there. It looks like it sits just like this, right? So there's gonna be. Hmm, hmm. Be three bolts. Uh, then that's what you gotta get out. Rotate the pulley around to get the screws in between, or your your your. Um, your socket and extension between the pulley bolts and then you can remove the whole thing. Uh, be careful about the hose, the vacuum hose when you're doing this because when it comes off um, it can, it's going to connect right here. If it's really brittle it might crack, you might need a new one, but honestly I don't have one so I hope mine's good. I always have to make a run to the store. Same thing with these bolts. If you uh, got a wire wheel, now's the time to use them. Clean these up. You don't want to you don't want to re reinstall stuff that looks like this.
All right, guys, be careful when you're removing this. As you see, there is a snap-on pliers down there. Don't just try to rip the the or snap-on uh, whatever those clips are called. Look, I've already kind of ripped my hose apart a little bit. This definitely needs replaced right here. Uh, we'll see if I can get to that. Honestly, I might just uh, try to fill the cracks with something. It's not proper, but. Fortunately, that's what I have to work with. All right, guys. So uh, I pulled this, and uh, it's without a doubt bad. I mean, it was putting out zero uh, pounds of inches of whatever the measurement was of mercury. Um, but listen to this. that hose I smoked it getting off so I'm definitely gonna need to replace it let's see where it goes looks like it just sits back there between everything I see it coming up you see it in between right here so that I'm gonna hop on my bike go get a new one of these Oh yeah, look at this. When do you think the last time this was replaced? My truck's got 319,000 on it. This may be the original. Honestly, this might have been, there's quite a few cracks in there here. So I gotta go get a new hose. All right guys, so this is what I'm gonna do. Um, it turns out, just so you know, the hose above your uh the hose above your vacuum pump is probably going to need replaced look at mine uh, i did this so don't worry about that and i did pro i probably did this to taking it off but otherwise this hose may have been the i mean even if the pump was good it probably would have been putting out full strength anyway uh just because of this hose right here but it's just a basic hose uh, i just got another one um, this thing, go pull out of this one, this end, just cut it off, mine was in there really tight. This may be the original hose, I got 319,000 miles on this truck. And, um, um, I got a new clamp right here. Um, and I'm gonna use some, some basic, uh, RTV type stuff. The High Lamar brand, I, I recommend, uh, when I had a Mercedes, all the guys in line were talking, saying about this. And I used it on valve covers, timing covers for that Mercedes and, Everything worked out well, but um And then your other end what goes over that is this piece that I couldn't find new So I'm just gonna throw this RTV kind of inside and hope it seals it pretty good But this piece is a uh, you see it's a big one a big end I don't know what size down to the vacuum hose end. So that just goes over here I'm gonna stick some RTV right here and put another clamp on it just for safety and hope uh, the hose isn't leaking anywhere else. But uh, this piece I could reuse, and this I'm going to reuse. I don't want to, but Pet Boys didn't have, uh, I don't, this is like a specialty item I would assume, but um, I'm gonna make it work for now. Okay, next up, next up we're gonna test this hose. Uh, we already checked that there was vacuum from the pump. Um, now, this hose comes from the solenoid over to the turbo, or over to the uh, wastegate housing, or wastegate actuator. So we're gonna check to make sure this is getting pressure. If this is getting pressure, um, and I'm still getting a good amount of black smoke when I press the gas, which is what is happening, my actuator is likely bad. Um, so this will tell me, um, if the turbo is potentially bad, or if uh, the actuator is bad, or if my solenoid is bad. 
Um, actually, it won't tell me if the turbo's bad. This will tell me if the actuator's bad or if uh, the solenoid's bad by testing here. So, this particular hose, I gotta fit this nipple on. And look at that. This is a very strong uh, 24 inches of mercury at, at the actuator. So what I'm going to do, because um, I'm still getting black smoke, I'm going to rule that out and go buy a new actuator uh, just to play it safe. Um, I shouldn't be getting any black smoke, but if I when I extend down to a, um, a full a throttle, you know, a heavy dose of throttle for an extended period of time, the black smoke just stays. I believe it should come on for a second and then disappear. Um, but mine sticks around, so that means my actuator is probably bad. There's a chance, I suppose, the turbo itself might be bad, but um, I don't know. I, I've touched, I've taken this off and checked the impeller, impeller play, and there wasn't anything there. It was strong and tight. So I don't think the turbo itself is bad, but I don't hear any turbo through the exhaust or right now. Um, so I think the actuator itself might be bad, but I'm going to. Um, test that out and uh, change that out now or I'm gonna go buy that part and uh, hopefully make another video.